We now have the moment where we discuss uh, various things that are happening in the world of business. And today we'll focus on the gig economy. It's something that uh, is not familiar to many people, but when uh, our guest of, uh, in studio explains to us, you get to understand more. And our guest is Olivia Nganga, who is a bank manager at Micro C Consulting. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our studios. Thank you for having me. Okay. I know a gig economy is not a new phenomenon, but mm -hmm. I'd like you to explain to us what it's all about and mm -hmm. what it involves. Okay. In simple terms, Carol, the gig economy is basically a platform whereby workers are able to be connected to um, customers. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a system where uh, demand of labor is matched with supply. Mm -hmm. So let me give an example that our viewers can relate to. So like, for example, an Uber, mm -hmm. if you want to go from point A to B, all you need to do is download the app and then basically get matched to a driver who can take you to your destination. Mm -hmm. So that's how the gig economy basically works. Mm -hmm. And it works to basically uh, provide opportunities to the young people in Kenya and in Africa in general mm -hmm. who are looking, who are not able to be matched to the uh, employment uh, sector. Okay. We've seen the youth unemployment uh, actually is scaling to levels that are unsustainable. Mm -hmm. And looking at this gig economy, do you think this is the solution actually to the youth unemployment crisis that is in the country? Yes. According to uh, MasterCard, uh, 800,000 people actually leave um, universities to get into the employment sector. And this is not sufficient because only 65% are absorbed into the traditional workforce. So where do the 35% actually remain? So the gig economy has basically risen up as because of digitization mm -hmm. and the rise of um, uh, uh, what we call it mobile money is able to facilitate the young people to connect to this platform. So what basically happens is, let's say I'm a worker mm -hmm. and maybe I'm a fundi, let's say a carpenter. So I can get connected to um, a customer who needs my services. Mm -hmm. Let me give the example of Link. Link is one of the platforms that we have been working closely with at MSC. Mm -hmm. So basically what happens is Link provides a platform, a pool of workers, mm -hmm. whereby you advertise your services. So I am a carpenter, I advertise my equipment or I advertise my resources and what I can do. Mm -hmm. And a customer will be able to request for my particular service. So this economy actually caters to the young, particularly let's say 18 to 24 years, mm -hmm. who don't have this work ready skills mm -hmm. to get into the market. And they are connected to ready customers who are willing to take them at a fixed price. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we equate maybe this gig economy maybe to temporary contracts or mm -hmm. something of that yes, sort? Yes. 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 Now, mm -hmm. looking at all, all that, what is driving this, the growth of uh, the gig economy? Because we, we're looking at some statistics, mm -hmm. we were seeing that it's actually growing at uh, levels that we, have, we had not anticipated, mm -hmm. maybe because of, of these uh, uh, unemployment levels that we have seen in the country. Is mm -hmm. that the case? It's true. Unemployment is a factor. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the traditional employers are, are saying that the youth are not coming out work ready. Mm -hmm. When I say work ready, they do not have some skills that employers expect them to have. For example, the soft skills, the digital skills that many employers are looking for. Mm -hmm. Sadly to speak, our institutions, our educational institutions are really um, struggling in preparing graduates for the job level. So the gig economy uh, presents that much for these workers. So other things that have also driven to the rise of the gig economy is things like uh, mobile infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Right now, um, you know, Kenya is one of the largest, fastest growing markets in mobile money, mm -hmm. and PESA started from Kenya. Okay. Secondly, things like smartphone penetration. So many young people have smartphones now, and the cost of smartphones have, uh, have, has reduced dramatically. So everyone, or can I say most young people, have smartphones, and they can access apps, and they can download these apps. The same thing with also um, customers. Mm -hmm. So the gig uh, platforms, how they work is basically they develop an app and then um, the worker has their app where they can uh, provide their services and the customers also have the app where they can also request for these services mm -hmm. at a fixed price. So it's basically short term work at fixed prices. Okay, but well, all the challenges that you actually find even when you're trying to connect maybe mm -hmm. uh, maybe customers to maybe services that are out there that needs to be addressed, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you have seen mm -hmm. uh, that come up maybe okay. in this uh, uh, economy? Okay, let me speak about a practical example. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned that we have done a lot of research on the gig economy and we are working with a particular client called Link. Mm -hmm. Link is a service platform and I say service platform basically what they do is they collect a pool of blue collar workers the likes of fundies carpenters plumbers so what they do is they match these fundies to customers who need these services so what happens is some of the challenges you've noticed is that the first thing is many of these workers struggle with is they don't have access to social protection 
you know, traditionally, if you would be employed by an employer, you'd be given benefits such as a pension, you'd be given health insurance and the like. Mm -hmm. But this gig worker, because he's only employed for maybe one hour per day or maybe one hour per week, he does not have access to this um, protection. The same thing we also noticed is access to finance. <clears throat> Remember, this young worker wants to grow. They're looking at the platform as a way to increase um, chances in terms of being employable and also to start their own business. So access to finance is a big struggle because many banks or many formal institutions are not able to give them adequate financial products. Mm -hmm. So this is what we have done. We have been partnering with Link and we have actually uh, done research and mm -hmm. developed uh, products which can actually look into what these people are uh, requiring. Okay, but even with the challenges, there are actually opportunities. Yes, there mm -hmm. are very many opportunities. Mm -hmm. For example, like women, we noticed that um, Women is, uh, women is a sector, I mean, women basically are marginalized in many areas. Mm -hmm. So in this case, um, women are traditionally reserved to roles such as um, home care and maybe, uh, what do you call it, maybe social kinds of services. But we are seeing increasingly women are also getting to be uber diverse, for example. So it's also opening up a space mm -hmm. for women. And also in the rural area, we are also seeing that um, through the government efforts, for example, the Ajira platform, mm -hmm people out there are being educated on how to become digital savvy mm -hmm. so that they are able to be brought onto these platforms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I'm afraid that's all the time that we had okay. to discuss uh, this gig economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, there has been Olivia Nganga, who is the banking manager for MicroSafe Consulting, talking about mm -hmm. the growth of the gig economy, which is actually being driven by the burgeoning uh, youth uh, population and also uh, mobile penetration and also internet penetration. Now, moving on to other stories making headlines in the world of business.